the family of the man who was murdered by his abusive partner have called for her to die behind bars. Sharla Dutson, a former drug addict with a personality disorder, targeted harmless and vulnerable Muhammad Mukhtar and put him through years of vile and very violent domestic abuse. The week before the killing, Dutson had struck up a relationship with a man online. On August 30, 2021, Dutson flirted with a man and exchanged sexual images and messages whilst at Mr. Mukhtar's flat in Manchester. She bound the 53-year-old by his hands, feet and neck with extension leads and left him tied up for two hours. Dutson also strangled Mr. Mukhtar, also known as Amin, with an extension lead. She was arrested in the street and later pleaded guilty to murder. Amin had also suffered a laceration to his liver, which was caused by a kick or stamp to his stomach from Dutson. The Means family have now broken their silence on the matter, blaming Greater Manchester Police, social services and the mental health team for several blunders that contributed to the tragedy. Brother Yassin told The Sun. She is simply pure evil, no words could describe how horrific her treatment of my brother was she's a modern-day Myra Hindley and a danger to all. She tortured and killed my brother, a loving son, sibling and uncle with 16 loving nephews and nieces and a great uncle to six. Amin was the gentlest of us and the best of us with loads of friends and his vulnerable nature meant he got taken advantage of. They met when he saw her crying in Manchester and felt sorry for her and went over to comfort her. He wanted to help and that was his magic he wanted to help everyone. It was 2017 when they met, but she was controlling and was abusing him, though none of us realized what was happening. He was a straight-up guy and there was nothing dodgy in his life, but she introduced him to Spice and he wouldn't even drink or smoke before this. He was a good son and wanted to make his mother proud and was never into Spice. He was no drug user he was coerced into doing it. He was born premature and was hard of hearing in one ear and had a bit of a stutter he was small in build and just nine stone, so very vulnerable. He suffered all his life with mental health issues and depression. Some friends who saw them told me they didn't look right together, she would shout at him and embarrass him in public. But he took that all and just followed her around. My brother wouldn't say where he was living, but she was controlling everything we now know and realize. Bootson was jailed for life and will serve at least 22 and a half years. Yasin continued. When an Asian man dies we take him to the mosque and wash him and it was there I saw all the wounds on his body. The police told us he was strangled with trauma to the neck and strangulation marks. When we were washing him you could see the marks from the cord around his neck, you could see bruises on his head, face, arms and body. There was a slice mark to the rear of his right bicep with marks from stitches and his left bicep had the same defensive wounds and that still had the stitches in the cut. This death was so preventable as she had strangled him weeks before and had been charged for her domestic violence. When she was arrested she told the police she was going to kill him and look what she did. There was no remorse whatsoever. She even told the court on her first appearance that she liked being in prison, she should stay there forever, as we are convinced she will always remain a danger to others. Thus like Myra Hindley, she should die behind bars. Utsun had been arrested three times on suspicion of assaulting Amin. On one occasion, she spent a month in custody before the case was ultimately thrown out after he refused to support the prosecution. Her abusive behavior intensified in frequency and seriousness prior to the murder. Amin's sister Fosia said. She is pure evil and callous. Amin was a timid guy, he was just so quiet and kind, he wouldn't hurt anyone, and he did not deserve what she did to him. There is no punishment that she could ever receive that will ever compare to the pain that she has caused us as a family. As a family we want answers. The hospital staff all did their bit, they reported all the injuries to the police, and they have a lot of questions to answer. They simply have not done their job at Greater Manchester Police, it was four weeks before he died when they received a damning communication from the hospital. This was a high-risk domestic violence victim, and it took the police 11 days to respond, and all they did was ring him up. The phone call they never even bothered to visit a vulnerable man to check he was okay. The social workers and support workers must have known what was going on, but nothing was done to keep him safe. This is a very avoidable tragedy. The mental health team didn't even have next-of-kin details, it was six months after he died that the family got a letter from them. In court, it took the barrister about 40 minutes to read out all the horrendous stuff that had happened to our brother. It took so long, and I've not been able to sleep since that day. We even got abused at the court by her family. There has been no apology or remorse from any of them. The judge should have been more forceful with her in court, she was even putting her thumbs up after my victim impact statement was read out. She is clearly a manipulating, controlling witch who targets vulnerable people and should be kept behind bars. How many chances do you need to lock someone like that up as they are clearly a danger to others? The Independent Office of Police Conduct has launched an investigation into the handling of the domestic violence incident surrounding Amin's death. Rest in peace Muhammad Mukhtar.